newest thrill at the park, Delirium. It's all waiting for you at King's Dominion. So hurry up and get your tickets before the barbecue and brew festival is over at kingsdominion.com. Right now at 11, the images of Ellicott City continue to be heartbreaking. Cars crushed, scattered like toys. Streets and sidewalks turned inside out and pictures of loved ones lost forever. But tonight there is talk of hope and promises to rebuild after historic flooding. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bruce Johnson and I'm Leslie Foster. Tonight we're learning more about the two people killed in that disaster and what's being done to help this historic tourist area recover. We are all over this story. Chief Meteorologist Topper Shutt will tell us just how something like this could happen. John Henry is talking to people who hope to move forward, but we begin with Allison Barber, who has a look at all of the outpouring of love and support for the people of Ellicott City. You guys, Governor Larry Hogan declared this area a state of emergency, and when you look down this street where I'm standing in the daytime, you can see exactly why. The other side of all of this is that the people here in Howard County are trying to do everything they can to help Ellicott City get back on its feet. Uh, we live in Ellicott City and, uh, you know, we were just trying to find out how we could help. Thank you so much. Four different high schools, all in the same place, waiting to collect donations. Thank you. The cars came quick. Gentlemen. Thank you so much. Bringing water, cleaning supplies. The majority of it is bleach and trash bags. Thank you so much. And money. Yep, yep. <laughs> Ellicott City Partnership. And that's one of our town centers. and. Uh, it's where we all come together. This is what defines us, you know. As Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman addressed the public today, crews continued to search. Yeah, we're on Main Street also. We're going to walk with the boat in. We'll be in the water within 10 minutes. We are going to send the other dogs by land to search River Right. Officials say crews towed 180 cars from the area last night. We've come across a vehicle that has been searched. Today, they tried to get to at least 20 cars still stuck in the river. But the cars are only things. <laughs> Two people lost their lives in the quaint city now covered in mud and debris. She had a big heart. She was full of life. Jessica Watsula's brother says she loved the outdoors and her 10 year old daughter. In a moment, nature stole it all. And I just kept driving until I got down to the scene and I started walking along the river. I had a pair of jeans on and shorts and I was wading in mud up to my knees and a rescue crew called up to me and were like, who the heck are you? And I said, I'm looking for my sister. She's missing. I finally was able to see her once they had her name in. The other person killed in the flash flooding is 38 year old Joseph Blevlin. He worked at the University of Baltimore. In a statement, the school's president said he was known for having a wonderful sense of humor. Reporting live in Ellicott City, I'm Ellison Barber, WUSA 9. Ellison, thanks a lot for that. As you can imagine, the people who are trying to rebuild their lives, they've got a lot of questions tonight. Number one, where do they start? There's so much to do. The Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman is trying to get some answers for the community. WUSA 9's John Henry joins us more with uh, that call for help. John? Yeah, the county executive talked to a packed house. Among other things, he mentioned that there are actually plans to open a disaster assistance center here soon. But in the meantime, people here are primarily focused on just cleaning up. Uncertainty looms in the air over Ellicott City. Just days after a devastating flood rocked the town, many here want to know what comes next. Count Sonny Singh as one of those people. I always want to live in Ellicott City. He had just bought this house on Main Street. He wanted to live in this town for the sake of his family so they could benefit from Ellicott City's great schools. But as you can see, his house is now a mess. So I mean, basement is flooded, it's completely flooded. First floor is completely flooded. Many in this crowd are in the same situation as Sonny. They gathered at a community center Monday afternoon with dozens of questions for community leaders. This woman wanted to know when residents would be able to come back downtown. Were all the buildings to be secure before allowing us in, or will this be staggered? Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman answered the questions as best he could. He's hopeful for the future, but also realistic about the challenges that lay ahead. Well, there's a lot of devastation down there. It's going to take a while, a long while, for us to rebuild. For that said, he believes this is also a time where Ellicott City can plan ahead for its future. He said the Department of Planning and Zoning is putting together a master plan for Ellicott City to make sure floods like these happen less often. One year from now, I, I, I see a town that's going to have a, a stronger infrastructure. 
I see a town that's going to have uh, newer buildings that are going to be innovative and they're going to be resilient. As for Singh's future, he has no plans to sit idly by. One way or another, he plans to live with his family here in Ellicott City one day. Future man, so I have to rebuild it again, once again. Now, the county executive has also requested that the county council hold a special session. That way they could talk about uh, extending the declaration of emergency that they have here in the county. That could provide some further relief to Ellicott City. From Ellicott City, John Henry, WSA 9. Yeah, that main street will come back, but it will be a different street for sure. Thank you, John. You know, this is a story of just unbelievable pictures. Most of them show the intensity of that 